people who normally don't publicly talk about prayer. They've been comfortable now to say, pray for DeMar. Pray for strength for DeMar, for healing for DeMar, for comfort for DeMar. I know that prayers are real and God is real. It was just spiritual. And I just, I was going around and I just, I mean, I was going around my team and saying, God's real. Glory to God for keeping DeMar and his family in the palm of his hand over the last couple of days and his healing powers. Well, last week we saw the real dangers that professional athletes face when Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin went into cardiac arrest on the field after making a basic tackle during Monday Night Football. But what we saw next was an incredible story unfold, not only in the sports world, but the nation stopped to pray for DeMar. And God has been answering those prayers in a recovery that even doctors are calling rare. Just yesterday, DeMar Hamblin was discharged from the hospital in Cincinnati and headed home to Buffalo, where he is being treated by Buffalo General. Here to discuss this amazing story is Dr. Robert Parisian, orthopedic sports medicine surgeon at Mount Sinai Hospital, and Jack Easterby, former team chaplain for the New England Patriots and Kansas City Chiefs. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here to discuss how we are seeing faith unfold in the world of sports. Uh, Jack, I'll start with you. As a team chaplain, I mean, you've been around pro athletes and sports for a very long time. This whole story is just incredible to me. But I think the most fascinating thing is that we are seeing people pray openly, as you just saw on ESPN, people talking about the power of God, that God is real. I mean, these are things that are happening on public television, and it's being embraced not criticized, and people want more. Have you ever seen anything like this before in the sports world? Well, thank you so much for having me on. And the answer is no, right? Uh, we haven't seen much like this. And I think what happened was uh, that the whole world and even medical experts were rendered, right, powerless. What do you actually do? And when you're rendered powerless, a lot of times that causes you to call out to something that's more powerful uh, than you are, or even in this case, even medical professionals. So I think we saw the entire country come together to reach out to a power that was bigger in this case than doctors or bigger than a hospital system or bigger than even uh, a medical uh, emergency group. Um, and so when that happens and the power is displayed and something like this happens, it really unifies a lot of people because they're getting over themselves and reaching for power elsewhere. And I think it was so encouraging to see and obviously to sit on the back half of good results with DeMar getting back to health and so many other things that have been positive. We're able to celebrate the event uh, as a unifying event for our entire country. Dr. Parisian, you are one of those medical professionals. It's been just over a week since we saw DeMar nearly lose his life on the football field, people watching, a live audience. You've been on the field yourself as a player, as a team doctor. Talk about how rare and how remarkable of a recovery we're seeing DeMar have. Well, great to be with you tonight, Lindsay, and, uh, and you know, wonderful comments um, uh, by Chaplain Easterby. So from a medical perspective, um, this is quite remarkable. And why is that? Well, it is very rare and it's very uncommon to have a sudden a cardiac rent event or cardiac arrest on the field. Uh, in addition to that, there's a lot of manager, managerial decisions that had to line up appropriately for him to have a positive outcome. And so when those medical professionals went and responded on the field, they had to quickly identify that he did not have a, a pulse, which again is an uncommon finding when you're responding to something on the football field. They then began CPR. This had to be high quality CPR so that they could do chest compressions, pump blood out of his heart so it could perfuse his organs uh, and his brain, thus delivering oxygen to the brain. In addition to this, they had a defibrillator that was present that they put the pads on his chest, again, very quickly within one to two minutes. Uh, that identified a shockable rhythm, which what we're learning seems to be a, a ventricular fibrillation, which is life-threatening. This is when the heart is sort of quivering and it can't just pump the heart, the blood out normally. Uh, so they defibrillated him. And then his heart came back. Now, again, we don't know the exact mechanism of injury here, but one of the things that has been discussed is this phenomenon called commotio cordis. Now, that is a very, very rare event because it's a small window of time. It's a millisecond window of the cardiac cycle that really represents only 1% of the cardiac cycle where that player has to receive that blunt trauma to the chest. It's a small window. So then they identified this, they got him and intubated him, put the, put the breathing tube down, got him to the medical center. During that process, they had to assess his cardiopulmonary status as well as his neurologic status. And we now know that he's able to 
to come out and, and get the breathing tube removed, and he's breathing on his own. Uh, he responded to the uh, medical uh, professionals by asking who won the game, and they, I think they very appropriately stated, uh, you did. You won the game of life. And I think we've right. seen his neurologic uh, recovery um, be quite uh, remarkable since then. You know, Jack, it's been crazy to see, too, how this has brought to light just the importance of life uh, that we hear Dr. Parisian talking about there. We saw that game completely stop and it, it didn't, you know, start over and they didn't reschedule the game. And we hear people on ESPN and other uh, organizations saying, you know, it's just a game. It, what really matters here is human life. Um, how are players responding to this? And do you think that this faith, this power that we're seeing people talking about God, does it have staying power within the sports community that people will be able to openly talk about their faith like we're seeing right now? Well, I think it absolutely has staying power. I think we've seen that over the course of history. I think the truth is that when you have a big event like this, it forces everyone to probably have a little bit of perspective. Uh, it forces everybody to maybe take into account things that we don't normally take into account, consider what happens after this life, and then also make you consider what you really trust in moments of adversity. And so I think we have a little forced perspective on all of us. And I think it will stay. I think that uh, football, uh, obviously, and faith have gone together for a long time. I think there's great ministry and great faith going on without, throughout the entire NFL and throughout sports in general. Um, but I think the camaraderie of being able to trust something bigger than yourself, to be able to hit a knee and trust, hopefully, uh, God uh, to help you through that situation or guide you in the next circumstance that you're going on. I think our country could use a lot more of that, quite frankly, uh, when we go through adversity uh, and we have forced perspective. Absolutely. Dr. Preeja, only about 30 seconds left, but how is the medical community talking about this recovery? Because it's so rare and it seems, you know, abnormal. Only 30 seconds. Well, from a medical perspective, can we say that this recovery and this outcome so far, again, short term, he has a long way to go, is remarkable? Yes, we certainly can without question. Now, is it miraculous? I leave that to each individual to uh, make a decision uh, on their own with regards to that. But we do know from the outpouring of of support and faithful based support, as well from his teammates, from fans, and as well as DeMar Hamlin himself, when he simply stated, God is behind all of this, no coincidence. So it appears that DeMar Hamlin, his teammates, the fans, all those that are supporting him, they really believe uh, that this is nothing short of miraculous. Hmm, I like those comments from DeMar Hamlin. This is God behind this, no coincidence. Dr. Robert Parisian, Chaplain Jack Easterby, great to have you all to talk about such an incredible story. Thanks for being with us. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. More Spicer and Company right after the break. Don't go away.